Hello and welcome to the Learning Resource Center South Short Video Series on Neurodiversity. My name is Amy Accardo. I'm an associate professor at Rowan University in the Interdisciplinary and Inclusive Education Department. In this session, we will focus on the disability rights movements, models of disability, definitions of neurodiversity, identifying as neurodivergent, and we will end with making some connections. So let's start by considering the disability rights movement. First, an understanding of disability history and models of disability may help situate neurodiversity and the neurodiversity movement. So the neurodiversity movement centers disability as diversity and it builds on the disability rights movements of the 1960s and 70s. So social justice movements of the 1960s included a focus on disability and the disability rights movement adopted the mantra, nothing about us without us, which is still powerful and still empowering for neurodivergent self-advocates and allies today. But despite historic victories in the form of legal mandates that we all know of like ADA and Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act in 1973, many disabled individuals remain segregated today. For example, whether it's in segregated special education classrooms, uh, in their homes or in segregated schools. So building on the disability rights movement, the neurodiversity movement began with the autism right, rights movement in the late 1990s. The neurodiversity movement is also not something new and the movement is based on a philosophy for embracing different ways of thinking and behaving as a normal variations of being human. As a source of more information on this slide, you see a link to the blog of Nick Walker, who was an autistic self-advocate, a professor, and an influential scholar all around. And his blog is one that's highly recommended. Um, you can also search the word neurocosmopolitanism if you wanna take a break and check that out. An understanding of historic models of disability may further situate the neurodiversity movement. So while there are many models of disability, we are gonna consider just two models, which are most applicable to the experiences of neurodivergent people. And the medical model is one of those. The medical model of disability stems from the medical field. So individuals with an impairment are given a disability diagnosis to access services and treatments such as medical treatments or to receive an IEP or 504 plan at school. And the medical model views disability as a deficit with a person's body or mind. The focus of this model is treating or remediating the deficit in an effort to remove it so the individual is typical or normal. Um, of note, the link on the left of this slide, if you want further reading, is to a wonderful reading called Reassigning um, language, and that's by Simi Linton from the Disability History Museum. So in contrast to the medical model, which is trying to remediate and fix people to become more normal through disability labels, the social model of disability shifts the focus from disability as a deficit to disability as socially constructed. The social model separates impairment, the word impairment is often used, and, and that is the person's functional limitations from disability, which are the barriers imposed on a person. So the social model recognizes that societal barriers turn impairments into disability. So um, and, in other words, it's often the environment or the policies or the systems or procedures that are in place that can disable the individual. So I'll give an example, a, a teen with ADHD who learns best at school through hands-on activities may not be disabled in an active lab environment, but they may be disabled in a classroom lecture environment where they're supposed to sit down and listen to a lecture and take notes for an hour. So neurodiversity is rooted in the social model of disability 
as it is the best fit with the shared experiences of autistic self-advocates. And as noted on this slide, a quote from scholar Jack Den Houding, most advocates within the neurodiversity movement are proponents of the social model of disability as this model describes well their experiences. Even for those autistic people with the highest support needs, disability can be minimized or avoided through environment change and the provision of appropriate assistive tools. Importantly, to minimize disability for autistic people, both the physical and social environment require change. So with that quick bit of historic um, background, let's go back to our question of what is neurodiversity? So neurodiversity is a term that was coined by sociologist and autistic self-advocate Judy Singer in the late 90s. And there is no one agreed upon definition of neurodiversity. So I'm going to start by sharing a few here, a few well-established definitions. And the first one, again, by Nick Walker, Neurodiversity is the diversity of human brains and minds, the infinite variation in neurocognitive functioning within our species. Another definition here from Syracuse University, neurodiversity is a concept where neurological differences are to be recognized and respected as any other human variation. These differences can include those labeled with dyspraxia, dyslexia, uh, ADD, ADHD, uh, autism, Tourette syndrome, and many others. A third definition I'd like to share, because uh, it's a little brief. I, I like this one. I worked with it. We use this at Rowan University within our Rowan University Neurodiversity Task Force. Neurodiversity is the full range of variations in cognition, learning, behavior, and socialization that exists within the population. So. I'm sure you're noting commonalities in the definition, specifically the focus on the fact that we all have brain differences. So in other words, neurodiversity refers to variations in neurocognitive functioning that are to be recognized and respected as long as any other human diversity like race, gender, sexuality. So let's take a minute and also consider what neurodiversity is not. Neurodiversity is not a theory. It's not a way of thinking. It's a fact, right? We all have brain differences. We use the term neurodiversity in line with other forms of diversity. So a usage example would be we recognize the neurodiversity of our K to 12 student population in our schools. So often when we talk about neurodiversity, neurodiversity, people ask, you know, how do you know if you're neurodivergent? Who's neurodivergent? So as seen on this slide, anyone with a brain difference may identify as neurodivergent. Neurodiversity encompasses individuals who identify as, you know, autistic, and we will place special emphasis on autism through our short video sessions. It also encompasses individuals with other brain differences. I already mentioned ADD, dyslexia, Tourette syndrome, but also those who maybe have a hearing, a vision, a psychiatric, psychiatric disability, uh, you know, something like anxiety may consider themselves neurodivergent. What's an important takeaway is that neurodiversity is not exclusionary and it includes individuals with a vast range of differences. So anyone with a natural brain variation may identify as neurodivergent. Um, just to point out um, some of the language, and we'll talk more about language in our next short video, but you may hear me on this slide say identify as several, time, several times. So we wanna make sure that we're not assigning anyone a neurodiversity label. We don't assign people as neurodivergent, right? So it's up to individuals to identify as neurodivergent themselves. And we also note the word difference here. Neurodiversity does not talk about disorder or deficit. It's a focus on diversity. And most importantly, as you'll see on the next slide, neurodiversity takes on a strength perspective. So with a focus on a strength perspective, disabilities are understood through a lens that filters out social prejudice, 
filters out deficit language and instead builds on each individual person's strengths. So I really like the image on this slide as it highlights some of the many strengths often connected to various disability labels. Uh, for example, individuals on the autism spectrum often excel in fine detail processing, in concentration and memory tasks and dependability, in systematic thinking, they're often honest and to the point. Individuals with ADHD are often known to be highly creative, innovative, energetic. And overall, those who are neurodivergent are found to be resilient and innovative thinkers. So in conclusion, I urge you to reconsider disability as diversity and start to consider, if you've not before, this idea of um, neurodiversity and how it may impact your view of disability. So let's conclude by uh, making some connections with a few probing questions. Is disability valued as a, a strength? Is disability valued as a culture of diversity in your school or community? Maybe think through why or why not. Can you think of a socially constructed barrier, policy or procedure that exists for neurodivergent students in your school or community? And how about what action can we take to remove a barrier or update a deficit-based policy or procedure? Thank you. A few uh, final quick notes. Just want to point out that you there was a rainbow infinity symbol seen throughout several of the slides. I want to point out that that is used to denote neurodiversity and autism and that autistic self-advocates do not embrace the puzzle piece, which has a negative connotation to discriminatory history in relation to autism. And I also want to point out that throughout this presentation, there are multiple links um, on many slides for additional resources and reading information. And our wonderful LRC South staff uh, have uploaded a copy of this presentation to our LRC site as well. So you can um, exit the video and you can pull up the presentation. That way you have access to all of those links. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed the short video.